Alright, so we've seen that completing the square and using um, the fact that the derivative of arc sine of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, is the useful combination. Um, allows us to, to do some new integrals. And now I want to do a, a sort of interesting example that I stumbled upon. Um, I'm going to do two integrals and then sort of observe something interesting about them. First one is integrate 1 over the square root of 2 minus x squared. So the idea is I want to, you know, rewrite this in the form so it looks like a derivative of arc, uh, arc sine. And I already have, you know, a constant minus a square, so I don't need to actually complete the square here, but what I do need to do is get a 1 instead of a 2 here. So I should factor a, a 2 out of this, the stuff inside the square root. So I'm going to factor out a 2, and 2 is times 1, and x squared is um, 2 times the quantity x divided by root 2 squared. Right, so when I square x over root 2, I get um, x squared over 2, and when I multiply by 2, I just get x squared. Alright, so this is the integral of 1 over the square root of 2, dx over the square root of 1 minus the quantity x over the square root of 2 squared. Alright. And this looks like the derivative of arc sine. So we can do this by letting let u equal x over root 2. So du is 1 over root 2 dx. And I actually have a 1 over root 2 dx. So this is the integral of um, 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared du. So this is going to be arc sine of u. This is arc sine of x over the square root of 2 plus c. Alright, so, you know, fairly straightforward example of massaging your integrand to make it in the, the shape that you want it to be. So here, I just, you know, force there to be a 1 here by factoring out a 2. I want to compare that to a different looking integral, which is x over the square root of 2x squared minus x to the fourth. So again, um, this looks like sort of a quadratic in x squared, right? If I square x squared, I get x to the fourth. So the idea is to think of this thing here as a quadratic in x squared, and then we'll probably make a substitution, u equals x squared, and then I have something related to du up, to here, up top. So this is a quadratic in x squared. So I should try to complete the, uh, the square here. So this is x over the square root of, let's factor out the minus sign, so this is minus x to the fourth, which is x squared, squared, minus 2, x squared. So I have something squared minus twice that something. And this looks like, you know, t squared minus 2t, which I know 
to complete the square, I should add and subtract 1 here. So if I add 1 inside here, I need to subtract 1 to undo it. Uh, add 1 to undo it, right? So this is minus x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 1 plus 1. So everything works out. So I add 0 in a fancy way, and now I can recognize that this piece is x squared minus 1, the quantity squared. So this is the integral of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1, the quantity squared, dx. Alright, so again, by uh, completing the square, we're able to get this into a form sort of similar to the derivative arc sine, and now I just need to do a substitution. Right, so I'm going to let u be x squared minus 1, and then du is 2x dx, so I have a sort of 1 half du up here. So this is the integral of 1 half 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared du. So this is going to be 1 half arc sine of u plus c. Okay, so we've done these two integrals that if we integrate x over the square root of 2x squared minus x to the fourth, we get 1 half arc sine of x squared minus 1 plus c. And if I integrate 1 over the square root of 2 minus x squared, then I get arc sine of x over the square root of 2 plus c. And what's interesting is these two integrands are basically the same. So note, if x is strictly positive, um, and for these to, to make sense, it needs to be between uh, 0 and uh, the square root of 2. Otherwise, you start getting negative signs under here. Um, so if x is positive and less than root 2, so 0 is strictly less than x is less than or equal to the square root of 2, then I could factor an x squared out of this denominator here. So x over the square root of 2x squared minus x to the fourth. This is x over the square root of x squared times 2 minus x squared. And the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. This is the square root of x squared times the square root of 2 minus x squared. And if x is positive, the square root of x squared is just x. Um, in general, the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. But since we're assuming that x is positive, this is just 1. So for positive x, x over the square root of 2x squared minus x to the fourth is 1 over the square root of 2 minus x. So what we've shown is that these integrands, and so these integrals, are the same for positive x and less than the root 2. Which means that this antiderivative and this antiderivative are actually the same. So we've shown that for x positive and less than the square root of 2, and it'll actually work out at x is equal to 0 if you check it as well, that there is a constant C. So 
arc sine of x over the square root of 2 is 1 half arc sine of x squared minus 1 plus c. And in fact, if you let x is equal to um, the square root of 2, this is arc sine of 1, and this is arc sine of the square root of 2 squared minus 1, which is arc sine of 1, and arc sine of uh, 1 is pi over 2. So pi over 2 is equal to pi over 4 plus c. So if you let x be the square root of 2, um, you can see that c has to be pi over 4. So we've actually shown that arc sine of x over the root 2 is 1 half arc sine of x squared minus 1 plus pi over 4, which is pretty cool and quite not obvious. Um, and if you think about it for a while, you can't actually figure out why this has to be true. Like, it comes from the properties of sine and cosine, um, but you have to combine them in an interesting way and then invert it to see why this is true. So this is a, a neat property that you can come across just by integrating the same integrand two different ways.